So, but he, uh, um, no, he, 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 the first time I went in to see him, he, uh, um, he looked at me and he go, oh, are you American? I go, yeah, I'm American. He says, okay, I give you American koan. Mm -hmm. And it was American koan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he, he uh, how do I say? He adjusted, he adjusted the, uh, he adjusted everything for the, I mean, it's basically the same thing, but he adjusted the, the exact words and the, 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 and whatever the uh, thing he, for the, you know, different cultural considerations or whatever. Mm -hmm. My very first koan that he gave me was when, you know, he said, he said, you and Mary, I said, yes. And so he took out my hand, he took out his hand and he says, let's shake hands, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You don't shake hands in Japan. Mm -hmm. It's not part of the culture, right? Mm -hmm. You never touch, you never, you know, in Japan, you know, in, in, in public life, you never, you always shake, you always meet when you bow to each other, you don't shake hands, right? Mm -hmm. So um, he said, let's shake hands. So we shook hands and he said, okay, now when you're shaking hands with me, how do you realize God? That was the first column. So this is obviously, how do you realize God? So, but I never passed that koan. I never could answer that koan. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so I told him it was too difficult at one point, and he just yelled at me. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so then after, I don't know how, how many years went by, two years went by or something like that. And finally, he, he looks at me and he goes, it's too difficult. Which is exactly what I'd said to him two years before, but he said, it's too difficult. He says, I give you new koan. So that's when he gave me the, uh, the stick koan. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And um, have, did you choose him between other teachers or you just found him because uh, he was uh, for Americans? Or, Oh, you mean how did I meet him? In the, yeah, in the how did you meet him? Oh, do you know who do you know who Ramdas is? Yes, I know. Baba Ramdas? Uh, no. You know, he, he died a couple of years ago or something. Yeah, I, I can't know. remember something like that. You know, I can't remember what, what, exactly when it was that he died. But anyway, I had I had met Ramdas. Um and uh, uh and I went to him and and I, I had a talk with him and he uh um, I told him, uh, I've been doing yoga, uh, going to India and so on. Mm -hmm. um, this was like back in 1970, in the early 1970s, whatever. And, uh, um, and he, uh, uh, and so I've been having a, but the kind of yoga that I was doing, I, I hadn't met Ramdas before, but I, I was studying with a particular yoga teacher because it was similar to the kind of yoga that he had studied with, right? When he'd gone to India. But it hadn't worked out for me. I wasn't happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, it was so in I, India or in America? Where? In India. In yeah. India. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But also in America, too. They had a, they had a, this group had a, a branch in America, too. Mm -hmm. So I went over to study at their ashram in India and so on in 1972. And, but I didn't, I wasn't really, I did it for a few years, but I wasn't really happy with it. So um, in 1974, through a combination of circumstances, I ended up meeting Ram Das, and I told him what was going on with my yoga practice, my meditation practice and so on. And, uh, um, and he said to me, he said, uh, basically the summary was after listening and asking a few questions and so on he said to me he said well i think that your your heart is okay but your mind is really messed up mm -hmm. you're really confused mm -hmm. and he said i think what you need is some mental discipline mm -hmm. and he said the strictest person i know is this zen teacher from mio shinji Mm -hmm. And I think, and he's going to be giving a retreat, a meditation retreat. Uh, in he came to the U.S. You know, he's going to be giving a meditation retreat at this place in New York. Um, uh, it was like in a month or two afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, he gave me the information. Actually, he actually had a 
flyer and he gave me the flyer. He said, I, you sh I think you should go. Mm -hmm. So I did. That's, and that's how I, that's how I met this guy from, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from Neo Shinji. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, did you agree that uh, it's helped uh, you to clear your mind? This teacher. Oh yeah, abs absolutely. But but there was there was a whole. Uh, I mean, in, I mean, I'm still doing it, you know. So, I mean, obviously, I've got a strong attachment to it. Um, uh, and um, but the other side of it is that there has been so many difficulties and so many misunderstandings and so on. It took me years to understand things. And you know, one of the things that happened. Um, with doing koans, with studying with this guy with Neo Shinji, I would end up, I, I didn't know what to do a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and I didn't know, uh, I mean, it was just, I was just kind of, because I kept failing koans and, and, uh, um, and it, it was, I, so I was really confused basically. And then, so because I was, because of this kind of confusion, then I passed a couple of koans, but I was still confused and I still didn't understand what was going on. And uh, because of this kind of uh, confusion that I had, I uh, ended up going to, uh, I did a Vipassana meditation retreat at a temple in Thailand um, for 10 days. And then I ended up uh, um, going to this uh, uh, teacher, that I met before, I mentioned before in Japan. And, um, and basically what happened was that I learned about breathing practice, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I had never learned this from this guy from Neo Shinji. He'd only taught me koan. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't getting anywhere. I was just spinning my wheels and stuff. So I went back to him Mm -hmm. After doing, after getting some instruction in, in the in the breathing practice, it's kind of like a font foundation of, of mm -hmm. uh, meditation, you know, sitting practice. And I went back, I went back to the the, the guy from Neo, you know, from Neo Shin, uh, Neo Shinji, and uh, and it was basically I was having the same kind of experience. I didn't know how to answer what he was saying, what he was asking me to do. But but then after about three or four days or something. I went to see him and he, and he said to me without any, without my saying anything about it, he said, oh, he said, you're sitting, your meditation is much better than before. Mm -hmm. I said, really? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, your mind is clear, right? And, you know, and, but he had, I was angry actually, mm -hmm. because he had never given me these instructions and in, in how to do basic meditation practice. He just gave me this koan stuff. And we just, I just ran, ran around in circles for a long time, not knowing what to do. And then I got this instruction from somebody else and came back to him and, uh, uh, you know, in breathing practice. And all of a sudden he was, he, he liked it. And I started passing some koans and it was just, you know, it was like, this isn't working for me. You know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, um, uh, you know, why didn't he, why didn't he give me this instruction right at the beginning, you know, like the other teachers did. And uh, so I left and that's why I ended up going to the, ended up going to the other teacher who, who had this base of uh, breathing practice, but then he, he introduced koan, but in a different kind of way, using a different kind of way, use koans is just, as I was talking about before, it's just the one, the one koan. So that's kind of what happened. And by breathing, you mean uh, like that Zen observing the breathing. So it's not like. Uh, well, they they, they or... don't they don't use those they, in in Zen they don't use that terminology. They don't call it observing the they don't call it observing uh, the breathing. They call it focusing on the breathing and becoming one with mm -hmm. the breath. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're not trying to set up an observer. You're trying to the folk, the purpose is just to be one with you're trying to drop the observer actually and and trying to be just trying to be one with the with the breath. So it's a little different than mindfulness meditation. 
but to, to focus you uh, in the, at least to focus you need the observer someone who will focus oh i understand what you're saying i understand what you're saying but it's but it but the uh, um but the 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 dropping of the observer that's the beginning of the practice is is observing it and so on but the but the, the how do we say the goal or whatever is to drop the observer mm -hmm. so there's no separation between you and the breath i understand the idea because in the holotropic or rebirthing breathwork there is a stage which called breath release where kind of breathing began to breathe by itself and uh, it's happened not not very often but it's happened like dropping mm -hmm. but uh, usually it's um, called the process so it's not i drop observer because in order to drop i need someone who will drop that's right that's right it's just happening yeah that's right that's right. Essentially, just being the breath, but just with awareness. That's basically what it is. But still, usually awareness, it's uh, someone who, who are aware of. Well, see, this is an interesting idea, you know, because, I mean, there's a basic, there's this part of Western uh, psychology, which says that, you know, the, the, the fundamental thing in consciousness is a, is a subject that's aware of an object, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, but this is, but this idea is different that you can have consciousness without, just consciousness, just as it is without the observer, you know, without the, without, without the subjective object, the subject object distinction. I understand an idea. It's probably the enlightenment as it is. Yeah, right. I agree. A particular tradition, like it's still in Zaya, it's something different. No, it's Soto. Soto. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Soto. So Soto almost don't use koans, uh, right? Soto. Well, see, this is the, uh, this is, uh, um, there are branches of I mean, in probably in most of Soto, they don't use koans. Mm -hmm. But it's not all of Soto. Mm -hmm. And if you if you read, uh, are you familiar with Dogen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dogen is the founder of the of Soto, Soto sect. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And if you read, uh, he has this thing called the uh, the Genjo koan. Mm -hmm. Which, I don't know if you're familiar with it. The Genjo Koan is a, a Genjo is it's translated in a lot of different ways, but the Genjo, Genjo means kind of daily life. You know, the kind of use of koans in the way that Harada uses koans. It's based on the Genjo Koan, you know, Koan of daily life. You know? mm -hmm. But as I understand there, they don't have a criteria uh, that you get enlightenment finally. Did there's that... a lot of, they see again, this is the kind of, a, a, you know, there's a lot of disagreement about that within mm -hmm. Zen, mm -hmm. you know? And, but my teacher said that enlightenment is definitely something that happens and it happens once and it's final. No, like you found the answer with a stick. Is it enlightenment? No, it's not enlightenment. Why not? Because, because there's still a, a an ego self left over. But there's a but there's an you know I mean that's the that's the uh, the supposedly the process of using koans you know with these twenty thousand with these two thousand koans or whatever however depending on the school which how what the number is. It's mm -hmm. like it's it's leading you towards, you know, enlightenment. You know, it's like a process. And, you know, you get it, it's a it's sort of like a process that you go through. That that supposedly by the by the time you end the finish the process, you you cannot finish the process without becoming enlightened. That's the that's the belief, you know. But um, Harada himself was very he called you know what he called he called it ladder zen. 
you know, step by step, you know, going up mm -hmm. the ladder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he th he thinks that it's really he, he thinks he's very critical of it. Uh, why he is critical is he called it ladder, ladder. He called it ladder because of um, that he thinks that people just uh, they miss the important point, which is themselves, the person who's climbing the ladder. But they get uh, focused. Does not they uh, come closer to themselves uh, going? Well, I mean, this is a matter of. I mean, I can I can read you some stuff that he wrote about it. You know, I mean, uh, interesting. If, if you if you get a hold of uh, if you get a hold of one of it, he has a a book called The Essence of Zen, mm -hmm. and uh, um, if you get a hold of it, and you agree that it doesn't work. Well, what can I say? You know, it's not like I'm an authority on this kind of thing. You know, it's not like I don't, you know, it's like, but in my own experience, it didn't work. No, you, you, you did this one. Why it doesn't work? You did it. I, but I didn't, it didn't work for me in terms of the, uh, of the, I just ended up being confused. But so, you, um, you made one step at least. And you made I made a, I made, I made a couple I know I know I made yeah. a couple steps but but like I say it didn't have the it wasn't until I started with basic mindfulness practice basically essentially and then got into Zen with Harada that things started changing and I felt you know some real transformation going on other than that it was like yeah I answered a koan but so what and uh, what's what you are doing now? You have another master because you said that this one uh, died several years. Well, uh, he, he, I, I, I mean, I still consider him my teacher. I'm basically still doing the same practice that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Harada said what said once. He said, "If you can't find a teacher for yourself, then go sit in front of a tree, and the tree will be your teacher." Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> For the time being, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in the future. So. And uh, do you still work with the question which you found? Oh, sure. Or you sure. change the question, what, what's actually happening? Oh, no, 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 it's it's basically the same. The same question. Yeah, it's, so, very, it's very simple. It's just, who am I? That's all it is, it's oh, very I. simple. Just, yeah, who am I? Yeah. But the, it's, a, it's the focusing on the I part. You know, is is what you have to learn how to do. Is you have to learn how to focus on the eye when you're sitting. That's that's the hard part. But um, isn't it the last? Like uh, you know, if we will see still, it's uh, as a ladder. The coin, who am I, will be the last one. That's right. That's right. In a, in a in a in a in a ladder. Uh, uh, latter sense, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. So the previous coins are just a preparation or like a help with uh, yeah, 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 right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's right. You you just make a big jump. Well, it depends on how you want to. Uh, you have to. Uh, I don't know. If the, Big jump, but you go, you know, another way of describing it, you go directly to the source question. 